Hello, welcome to week 43 of this 52-week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth, and today I want to talk about IS6 and IS7's classic and integrated modes. I want to look at the differences between them and how you do a migration from one to the, the other, or basically a migration up until IS7's integrated mode. So let's take a look at the pipeline here in IS6 and look at our diagram. So here's the IS6 pipeline. We see authentication, NTLM, basic anonymous authentication. Then we see the handler. So we're going to use CGI, static file handler, or ISAPI. And notice how ASP.NET, we see the ASP.NET ISAPI DLL is kind of a, see it's kind of tacked on here to IS6. It comes through and then we have forms and windows auth is here. We have ASP.NET and then it continues on, sends a response and we log and compress. Now, so you can see that ASP.NET is not a first class citizen. And so now what we see here is IS7, and you can see kind of the same as before. We see the basic anonymous authentication up here at the top. We see the static and uh, the file handlers here, compression logging here. But here's what's changed, is Microsoft has taken these components here and says, let's actually move them up into the main pipeline. And that's what they've done. So in integrated mode, all of these have now collapsed into this nice, clean pipeline. And the advantages, there's a few advantages. Um, one is you now have forms off is possible right within the pipeline. So you can do this with static pages, text pages, exe, without any of the kind of hacks that you had to do in IS6. It's right in the pipeline. If you are as developer, you have a lot more access to the entire pipeline within a page. And there are a few other miscellaneous benefits too. So basically this is the way that IS has moved. And we want to be able to move our configuration that direction if at all possible. So, but the nice thing is, in the meantime, we have two modes. We have the classic mode here, and we have the integrated mode, and we can take our choice as to which one to use. But what I want to show today is how we move towards the integrated mode, because that is the way that things will be in the future. So switching over here to our server itself, we have uh, just a basic page here, welcome to contosa.com, and we have uh, the root content. I have the web.config. And here's the main thing between them. We want to look at the configuration changes. Later on, I'll explain some gotchas here, too. So here we see a pretty typical file. Uh, notice we have, uh, I try to keep it pretty clean. I pulled out some of the, the junk you may find in some large files. But I tried to have an example of some of the main aspects to it. So we see a config section. Uh, what I've added is Elma. And this is an excellent tool for developers. will often add this to include logging to either email if an error occurs on the site or log it to a database or potentially tweet it if you want to. So this is uh, it, just a really good example because it uses both the HTTP modules and handlers that I want to show in the migration. But we also have standard things here, the connection strings. We have our app settings. Don't worry, I changed that. You're not really seeing my key here. And an Elma section here, of course, because it's defined in the section heading up above. And we have the modules, HTTP modules, in this case I have three enabled, and a handler. And so basically if you hit elma.axd, in fact let's do this as an example because we'll want to see this afterwards. And so let's take a look here, and if we go to localhost slash elma.axd, and you can see it, it loaded the page. Basically I don't have any errors that I've thrown recently, but uh, as an example, of course you want to, if you use Elma, it's a side story of course, you want to make sure you pass or protect in that too. But I've opened it up real plain and simple here for this example. So notice that this here with the local host is working on the current server. And we're assuming this worked in IS6. We've brought it over to IS7 and we've put it in classic mode and it works. But now if we were to switch this from classic mode to integrated mode and refresh, notice we get a 500.22 error. And so this is fairly common. What's really nice about this error is it's pretty easy to work around. This is what we're going to cover here right now. And it's also very clear because it gives us exactly what we want to do. So it's given us three examples on what we can do. The first is to migrate the configuration. And what we're going to do is migrate from system.web. And let me go back and show you this. Notice we're in system.web is where these key parts are. And we're going to migrate to system.web server. And I'll show you the differences in a minute. This is the modules, but the handlers will be as well. And so it gives us a syntax on what we need, and I'll come back to this in a minute. The second option here, if we're certain that it's okay, we can say let's ignore the error with this validate, validate integrated mode configuration 
set it to false. And I'll show you this example in just a minute, but we usually don't want to do this because there's a reason why there's a config in the first part and not in the section. It will be ignored if we just ignore this. We will ignore certain things that we need, like Elma, for example, will break, or any other custom modulars, modules and handlers that you have. Um, third, what we can do is just switch back to classic mode. So, of course, you know, that's easy enough. But we defeat the purpose of migrating here to integrated mode and the benefits that we have with it, uh, both today and also in the future, the, the benefits will be even greater. So, what we want to do is let's take a look at how we can do this migration. So, if we fire up the command prompt and navigate to system 32 inet serve here, and you can see they have it in the path. Now, what we're going to do is let's do an app command migrate config. I'm going to do a slash question mark just to show the syntax for it. And scroll here to the top, we can see the main things. We're passing in the path as an identifier. And then we have some optional parameters. For example, we can target just a particular section. I'm not necessarily sure why, but you could. And also there's a clear. You can clean up behind yourself. By default, it's going to leave the old and the new together. And I'll show this just shortly. And also recursed. You want it to walk up the entire path within IIS. Um, what it doesn't have, which would have been handy, is to be able to point to a path on disk. But I guess it, it needs to go and see if there's anything else inherited from the global settings to take care of. And here's the syntax we have the path and notice this trailing slash is a gotcha. So let's run this and our site name is called contoso.com so we're in contoso.com. Now watch, I'm not going to put the trailing slash it says it can't find it. So that trailing slash is required. Hit enter and it says it's migrated and system.web this is HTTP modules and HTT handlers. And notice this blinking. Notepad has noticed the difference. I'm going to say refresh. Now notice when I do, it the top part did not change at all, but it's added this new section here, system.web server. And it's done the, the modules here. So what was called HTTP modules is now called modules, and was called HTTP handlers is now just plain handlers here. Pretty simple. It's added a precondition. It says, hey, this is managed code, so let's just run this for as a managed handler only. And also with the handler, we see two things too. Integrated mode, and also look at this. Runtime version 2. What this precondition means is it will only run if it's ASP.NET version 2.0, so we want to change that in a minute. And well, I'll, I'll get back to that shortly. So what we have here, now a question you may be asking is which is going to be used? Is it going to use this one? or this one, or a little bit of each, or does manage code use this? No, here's what happens. When you use classic mode, it's going to use those ones. If you're in integrated mode, it's going to use those ones. And then this line here was also that second recommendation in that error, is let's just ignore these duplicates here. And so let's go refresh, confirm that it does work well. And, but if we're going to pull this out, the validate, and do a refresh, then we see the error again. And the reason is because we have a duplicate. So what we're going to do is we know we're going to run this just in an integrated mode. And so let's pull our handlers and modules out. And let's do a refresh. And notice that it works. So notice a couple interesting things too. This did not touch other parts of system.web. This is ASP.NET and so you're going to have machine key, various other things, you know, trust levels and, and you name it. All of the ASP.NET remains untouched. App settings remain untouched. Connection strings, section, config sections remain untouched. But So for the most part it's just your modules and handlers that are moving from one to the other. And basically anything in system.web server runs for all requests. Anything in system.web is just ASP.NET and managed code. And of course you can filter this bottom part with a precondition so that it just runs for managed. So even though it, at the core level it applies to all requests, we can see that it's filtered here. Well let's look at this precondition here briefly too. And it's kind of a side thing but it is something you may want to keep in mind. And so we're going to go and run our Elma 
.axd. Notice that it works. But now let's say in the future you want to upgrade from 2.0 to 4.0. And there's more considerations, by the way, than just that. But in our simple example, it says not found at all. So no other error except it's just not found. And the reason is because this precondition says only run this if it's 2.0. Since it's 4.0 and we don't care, we want to run in both. I've now saved that and refresh. And now you can see it's running in 4.0 as well. So there's the one thing to keep in mind. If I do a couple undos so we can see this again, let's look at some other differences between it. Just minor syntax differences. In the case of the modules, it's identical with the addition of the precondition, which is optional. And then also the handlers, it now does something new. It just adds this name here. And then also just notice it's a lowercase handlers and lowercase modules rather than HTTP handle modules and HTTP handlers. And we also see the optional precondition was set here as well. So I'm not going to save that. Let's close without saving and open the latest trusted one. Now, notice here that this application path, this section, says which section do we want to migrate. So what we could do if we wanted to is let's say I have a subfolder called content and we have a web.config in there and I want to migrate it too, right? So content slash now watch. Uh, notice here this is not blinking yet. It hasn't changed. If I'm going to hit enter and this pops up and says there's been a change to this file. Now this is the site's root web.config or the site's web.config. So I'm going to say reload yes. Look at this. It added a bunch of junk that I don't really want. And so this is a gotcha with making a change to a subfolder. So if you want to change a subfolder I don't recommend that you use the whole path because it can touch the root of the site, which you may not want to do. What I'd recommend instead is create a dummy site. So just create you know, a dummy site and put your web.config in the root of your dummy site and then run the syntax against that. Or do it on your development machine. You migrate. Once it's migrated, then you're good to go. So that's the bulk of it. It's just really we can rely on this migrate to do it for us unless you wanted to manually change some of the syntax. Now let me look at a couple of gotchas that we need to keep in mind too. Mike Volodarsky has written an excellent blog post. He did this way back in the days um, as IS7 was released on some gotchas in breaking changes migrating to integrated mode configuration. So the first point is what I just covered and I would say that addresses 98% of the situations. Just run that and your application will most likely work. But there are some other gotchas. Um, if you do happen to use identity impersonate equals true in your web.config, there will be an error there as well. Uh, now, you know, you may not find that you need that nowadays, depending on the settings that you'd have in dedicated app pools. I think this is more common we used years ago. And also, the identity section may also need to be migrated. Now, there is a gotcha here with forms authentication and Windows authentication cannot coexist. You can't have two forms of authentication at the same time anymore. And it's kind of a drawback, unfortunately. It's just one of the, the few gotchas in the new model. And this I have run into it before. It may or may not impact you. Uh, but Mike has a real nice workaround here. So if, And I'll include this with the blog notes. Uh, otherwise, pause the video and type this long URL here. But Mike has a really good workaround. And what it basically does is it creates a wrapper page. So it hits two hits, one for each method of authentication. So it's a great idea there. And there are a bunch of others, um, 26 in total gotchas. But for the most part, you're not going to run into them. And things just work. So he goes up to 26 here. For you, you should be able to just do a migration, and it should work. Otherwise, take a look at this blog and go through and see if anything does impact you. For example, the, the URL length, if you have a really long URL length, and uh, max bytes and some of these things here in the query string can impact you. So thanks for tuning in. We're getting close to the end of the year here. Uh, nine more after this one. And so I've really appreciated the comments that I've received from a lot of people, uh, questions. By all means, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if this has helped you at all. And I hope to hear from you again and hope to see you next week. Thank you.